Hello, I'm Dr. Buzz. In this video, I'm going to share with you what I think is the most important information to know about drugs, information that every single person in the world should know. Needless to say, drugs and drug use are very controversial subjects which bring thorny questions to the table involving civil liberties in a free society versus the tremendous health and societal harms caused by drug misuse and abuse. In this video, I'm going to give you what I believe to be the unvarnished truth about each different drug and or drug class so that you can better navigate the very treacherous landscape that is out there should you decide to do so. As you can see here, we have a number of different drugs which have been plotted on this chart in a way that gives you a visual representation of how dangerous they really are. With the right and left axis showing you how deadly a drug is from the standpoint of its ability to cause overdose death. While the up and down axis shows you how addictive the drug is. So you can see how down here on the bottom left you have psychedelic type drugs and up here on the top right you have truly hard drugs like heroin and cocaine. Now hard and soft are not scientific terms that are used in medicine in relation to drugs. However, the concept is useful and if you look at this chart you can see how there's essentially what I would call an axis of hardness running from lower left down here to upper right. So you can see how drugs like heroin and cocaine really are hard drugs that are dangerous. They're highly addictive and they're highly likely to kill an overdose. Down here on the far bottom left you can see that these drugs are very much not like that at all with very low likelihood of overdose death and a low liability for addiction. Notice where alcohol is. You can see here that alcohol is actually pretty pretty tough as far as drugs go. And in a healthy lifestyle, alcohol would be actually the hardest drug that you use. Also note that caffeine here in the middle is actually more addictive and more deadly than psilocybin and LSD. Yet you've been subjected to drug-hating bias for the last 50 years. You've been told by the federal government, state governments, the police and judicial system, and school system that, that some of these drugs are actually so dangerous that you can't even take them safely under medical supervision, which is, of course, absurd. So, this kind of disinformation has been hurtful rather than helpful to the debate and to the public in general who have to navigate these drug choices out there in the real world. But here's the real truth. Drugs have actually four different dimensions of danger, in my view. So we have the two that you've seen on the chart here, plus there's also the danger of an accident or something happening while you're under the influence of the drug, and there's also the possibility that the drug will cause ongoing mental health problems even long after you've used it. So each drug has to be seen on its own uh, through the lens of these four different dangers. Now, to be fair, the federal government is correct in that heroin really is a bad drug and cocaine really is too strong for general recreational use. In fact, many of these drugs, these harder drugs that are up here in the upper right hand corner of this chart, most of these drugs are drugs that are so strong that I would suggest that you never even try them. If you never have, then don't. Because of what I call cat out of bag syndrome. 
Now think about this. Many drugs cause euphoria. And if you try a drug and it causes euphoria, then what's going to happen is, is that that's going to set the bar for what you perceive as maximally pleasurable up to a much higher level than it had been before. And that causes everything else to be demoted in how pleasurable you think of it as being. And so, just like losing your virginity, once you go there, there's no going back. There's no coming back. And so, that's how a lot of people end up uh, being ensnared in drug abuse. The chances of becoming badly addicted are much higher than you realize. For each hundred people that try a hard drug for the first time ever, 20 of those people, one in five, have taken the first step down the road to a life of destruction. Okay? The chances are roughly about one in five. So, this is a really significant matter. A one in five chance of a terrible outcome is what you have playing Russian roulette. It's that risky. So my question for you is, how much money would I have to offer you for you to be willing to take one shot from a gun that had one bullet in five chambers? Okay. How much money would it take? I'll bet if you ever tried one of these hard drugs, you didn't feel like you were taking a chance of one in five of ruining your life. But that's what the statistics are. Unfortunately, drug haters in America have spent the last 20 years or so beating up on marijuana and ecstasy and not reminding Americans just how dangerous hard drugs really are. Now, the big picture. Taking the two dimensions of overdose death risk and addiction liability from the chart and compressing those into a single dimension, you get this. This is very simplified, but it gets the job done. You can see that I have indeed classified as too dangerous for recreational use a number of drugs colored red, never even tried these drugs for recreational reasons. Okay, only the drugs colored orange, yellow, and green are suitable for recreational, religious, or personal use. So, let me talk about some specific drugs to avoid. Okay, as you saw on the chart, heroin is one of the worst drugs that there is. And this chart was made before fentanyl was uh, so big now. Okay, all the heavy opioids are very hard drugs that uh, are widely known to be highly addictive and deadly, and they're a source of most of the very serious problems that we have right now. Cocaine is also a drug to stay away from because the concentrated powder that is made from the coca plant gives a response in the brain it activates the reward center. It's so concentrated, it activates the reward center at literally three times greater than the reward center could ever be driven internally by things that are ple pleasurable activities, like sex and getting money and all kinds of things like that. So, if you use cocaine, you're going to be pushing that reward center artificially to a level that you can't match any other way. And so it won't be long before you'll be jonesing to do some more coke. And then it won't be long before you'd be jonesing to do it again and again and again. And then after a while, you're going to be addicted. And it's going to change everything in your brain and your brain will essentially be ruined. So it's a very serious matter. And the best advice is to just don't try any of these drugs. Meth 
is also a very problematic drug. From what I have read and I've heard from psychiatrists and mental health experts that getting off of meth is one of the most difficult things in the world. So again, this is another drug to avoid. Okay, the truth about alcohol. All right. Well, as you've already seen previously, alcohol is a much tougher drug than we realize. And you pass alcohol on the way to the neighborhood of the really hard drugs. But unlike with hard drugs, alcohol is pretty much unavoidable. So just bear in mind that you're dealing with a drug that is pretty serious and treat it with the respect that it deserves. And here's the thing, there are limits to how much alcohol you can consume. And for many years, it was considered that 14 drinks for a man and seven, drink, seven drinks for a woman per week was pretty much the maximum, where a drink is one beer or five ounces of wine or one and a half ounces of liquor. New research is casting doubt even on those numbers and indicating that, maybe, that there may be no safe drinking level. Um, so you'll just have to bear all of this in mind, but just remember that absolutely no more than 14 drinks a week for a man and seven drinks a week for a woman. So you can see at this point that psychedelic type drugs are, are just about the only class that are safe uh, to take. However, even they have dangers. Marijuana can cause schizophrenia. And then the classic psychedelics like LSD and psilocybin, they can cause their own problems. There are, there's a phenomenon called flashbacks where a person has a trip, uh, experiences the effects of the drug days or weeks or even months or years later uh, however, you should know, usually flashbacks are short-lived. So also, the classic psychedelics like LSD and psilocybin can cause what's called hallucinogen persisting perception disorder. With this disorder, the person takes a trip and then they never stop having the visual distortions, snowy vision, altered perceptions, and other things that go with the trip. It basically just never stops. Now, this is a rare condition, but it does happen to a small number of people. And it is very serious to those who are afflicted by it. Legal highs. Okay, there are many different online stores where you can buy these legal highs. Otherwise known as ethnobotanicals, these are various plant drugs that plants and plant extracts that are not uh, controlled substances. There are too many to cover here, but I'm going to touch on a couple of them. The hottest new ethnobotanical is called Kratom, and Kratom is becoming very popular in the United States. There's been some talk of scheduling it, but uh, the DEA was dissuaded from scheduling it um, for now, but it's hard to say what's going to happen. But here's what you need to know about it. It's kind of like an opioid, and it's also kind of like a stimulant. It's a very interesting drug. It's not quite as dangerous as opioids. However, what you need to know is that it is habit forming. And if you use it habitually, it will cause a discoloring of your skin underneath your eyes and on your cheekbones and cause you to look like you're, um, you know, uh, sleep deprived. So that's a matter that a lot of people are not aware of. Okay, DMT containing plants. There are many grasses and tree barks that contain DMT. DMT is one of the two primary ingredients in ayahuasca, a uh, psychedelic jungle drink that you have probably heard about that's used in religious rituals. Ayahuasca is generally fairly safe. However, you should know that it also contains another drug called an MAOI, a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, 
that drug is necessary in order for you to be able to absorb the DMT without it being broken down in your stomach. Because if you just consume DMT orally, it will be destroyed in your stomach by your stomach acids. So adding an MAOI inhibits that breakdown and allows the DMT to get into your brain. However, MAOIs are psychoactive in their own right and they're dangerous. And what has happened is there are antidepressants that are MAOIs. And so some people were taking, who are taking MAOI based antidepressants did ayahuasca and died because of too much MAOI. So this is a very serious matter and something you should bear in mind. Okay, the Amanita muscaria mushroom or fly agaric. This mushroom, which is quite recognizable and considered to be the most quintessentially psychedelic mushroom, is actually not a controlled substance in the United States. And you can buy it easily online now, if you're like most people, when you discover this, you're kind of confused and wondering, okay, I don't get it. How come I can buy the psychedelic mushroom? I thought they were illegal. Well, it's psilocybin mushrooms that are magic mushrooms that are a scheduled controlled substance, whereas the Amanita muscaria mushroom and the drugs in it are not controlled. And when you buy some and eat it, you'll find out real fast why that is. The mushroom does indeed give you a trip. However, it also causes a very severe stomach ache. And in Siberia, where natives consume this in shamanistic rituals, what happens is, is the shaman eats the mushrooms and endures the stomach ache, and then the shaman pees in a bowl, and then the other people drink his urine. And it supposedly gives them a trip which is much more mild and they don't have the stomach ache. Okay, bath salts. Drugs which are sold as bath salts are usually a very serious drug that are very strong and very problematic. And the reports that I'm getting from these are that they are not good and you should stay away from them. Okay, I want to take a minute to talk about a very serious matter and that is when you combine a classic psychedelic like LSD or mushrooms and alcohol, okay? It is possible to consume a very modest amount of alcohol along with a very modest dose of one of these classic psychedelics. However, you should be aware as the dose of each one of those increases, the potential for dramatic problems skyrockets because the psychedelic is mind expanding, whereas alcohol is disinhibiting. So just think about that. If you combine mind expanding with disinhibiting, as you increase both, the potential for some kind of bad drama to unfold grows exponentially. Okay, one last thing. Be very, very cautious when considering offering drugs to another person. Now, most people don't realize how reckless that most of us are in this regard. The natural tendency is that we want to offer drugs to other people as a gesture of goodwill. You want to share food and drink and basically anything that you might consume, you feel like you would offer to your friends and other people. However, with drugs, that's not such a great idea. You need to think about, and you may need, even need to inquire as to whether that's appropriate, because you don't know what the other person's relationship is with the drug. Maybe they're drug naive and they've never taken that drug before. So if they accept, you're initiating them into that drug. And it could be the first step in a life of problems related to that drug that you, that you facilitated for them. So you have to be careful about this and you should inquire with the party as to their status in relation to this drug and don't offer it to them unless they're already, 
they've already been initiated into it and it doesn't seem to be an issue or a problem. So, in conclusion, I hope that this information will help you better navigate the choices that are out there and I hope that you appreciate the gravity of the matter. Please share this information with everyone that you know and I wish you the best of luck. You'll need it.